add it. Meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. Oh, awesome. Man. All right. Okay. Good evening again to everybody. Streaming live. Good evening. Um, okay. To me. Good evening again to everybody. Good evening. Okay, good evening to everybody again. Since, uh, since we're on YouTube, and also I want to do a little bit of an introduction for today's um, lecture series. And first of all, I want to say thank all of you for your condolences, the well wishes, and all those that had great things to say. I know a lot of you knew Reggie. Um, so my sister is here. She, you, if anybody wants to say anything to her, they can. But again, the family thanks you. We thank you. Everybody thanks you. Appreciate all that you have done and said. So we, today's le lesson is going to be on racism and real estate and how the federal government uh, design ghettos. And to, today's lecture is we're going to talk about the laws that were put in place. The A lot of the different uh, uh, federal laws, state laws that were put in place so that they could have segregated areas. You know, we didn't have we didn't have ghettos that it just didn't pop up. They were by design. But before that, in today, today's news, which is still dealing with real estate, and I'm going to put something up. Let me go into the lesson. Okay. <clears throat> Can everybody see this okay? Uh-huh. Okay. <clears throat> Um, like I said, today's lessons are racism and real estate. And just like my mantra is, in this box is all that I, all of my knowledge, all that I think I know about everything that I think I know, I know is depicted right here in this box. I must keep in mind that there is more to know than what is in this box. So the point is that there's just so much more information out there that, that most of us have been educated on, that we went to school to find out about, and that the, not only the federal government, but society in general has been keeping it from us. So I'm going to talk briefly about the Israel conflict, the war between Israel and Hamas. How many of you think Israel has been around for a long time because they mentioned it in the Bible? Okay. How do you mean? Interesting question. <laughs> now, well, in 1948, that's when Great Britain yeah. got that land, but Jews have been along, around. This, this is, this is a. I wanted to show you this letter. Oh, wait a minute. There you go. This is a letter 
I just want to talk briefly about it, but this is a letter sent from the cabinet in uh, New in England to the Jewish Zionist organizations and to uh, Rostow, one uh, Lord Rostow. And basically, this letter is is the beginning of Israel. This uh, basically, if you can read the letter, is saying that they are committed to having a Jewish state. So, but it wasn't until, as Ms. Wright said, uh, not until 1948 that the, the state of Israel was created. They took the land from Palestine and gave it to the Jews that were living all over the world in different places, a lot of them in Germany and different places, but all over the world so that they could have their own state. Now, if you're looking for, the reason I'm saying all of this, because what's been happening in the news is really horrific. Uh, Hamas has been killing children and killing a lot of them. But what? why are they doing that? And the reason is they're still angry at, and the reason that they're still fighting and been fighting is because the world, England, or led by England, took their land and gave it to the Jews. So that's what they're re really upset about, it. and they're still pissed off about it. And that's why they're, you know, they're saying to the uh, Jews, "We're going to." Hamas is saying, "We're going to kill all the Jews." Um, America and a lot of other uh, nations are trying to figure out a two-state solution, where the Jews in Israel and the Palestinians can live side by side. But that's going to be problematic for now. But I just wanted everybody to just know that, you know, the reason why, when you think about, you know, because you're hearing a lot of horrific things about Hamas. Now, I'm not, I'm not a Hamas fan. I'm not, I'm not, to, but I just want you to think about the fact that the reason Hamas was created was because they took your, uh, their land and they start calling them terrorists. You got to be very careful about using the, that word. Black Panthers were terrorists. All the militant organizations were terrorists. Even some people have called Black Lives Matter terrorist. White people like to use that word when, when there's somebody, an organization that is against them. So you gotta be real careful about what, what you hear and listen to the news and, and how, how you absorb it. But I, I just wanna show this that. And actually my, my, my youngest son found this letter for me. And, um, and, it's, and it says, I have, I'm just gonna read it real quick. I have much pleasure in conveying to you on the behalf of his majesty's government, England, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the cabinet or the parliament in England. His majesty's government viewed the favor established in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this objective. Now, I'm not, I don't want to read all of it, but you can see that that's what they planned. It took them up until 1948 to accomplish that. But that's basically what they, what they did. Okay. So, so basically they were giving them the land before Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. That's what's so ironic. <laughs> yeah. I know. I yeah. mean, wow, like you said, keep reading your history. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So it wasn't a place to go after all of the atrocities. It was just because? Yeah, well, the Jews were scattered all over the world, and they 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 have been talking to about them for a long time. So they wanted to go be somewhere. They wanted that land because that's where Jerusalem is, 
and that and that's where they wanted to uh place that they wanted to live so that's why they were, were working on giving them but they but they took the land Okay. To a uh, place that they wanted to live. So that's why they were, were working on giving them, but they, but they took the land. Hold on a second. Okay. All right. There's some questions in the chat, uh, Tyrone. Oh, okay. Oh yes, news is so one-sided. Why are certain hostages being released? It's a lot of politics going on, and and, and you're exactly right, Alicia. This is um, is the news is just one-sided because America ha has committed to the Jews, the for Israel, because they own just how much power the, the Jews have. Um, this letter was written to Lord Rostow. Do you know what who he is? Anybody know who he is or what his family owns? Diamonds. <laughs> Diamonds and something that we have, uh, that, yeah, they've been robbing Africa for a long time. Um, just like the Bear, the Bear organization that owns the diamond mines. But the oil, shop, not oil. It, it, you would think that this particular that they thing that they own is owned by the federal government, but it's not. Hmm. The Federal Reserve. Okay. Hmm. The Rothschilds own the federal the bank. Okay. Yes. So it's, you know, there's just, there's so much more un laying under the cover that, that, said that we just don't know. Okay. Let me move on. Do, 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 do. Swap this out. Okay. All right. This, this is a group of books, and some of you know about the, the color of law. But this is a new one called Race and Real Estate. And it's a very good read. It's, it's uh, similar to The Color of Law, but it goes into it from a different perspective. Um, race and Real Estate, that one part, and I, didn't, and I didn't put that in this lecture, but they talk about HBCUs and how they land granted those colleges to be not in white neighborhoods, but make sure that they were in neighborhoods for where people um, or ghettos. So all of every, land is also, you know, just so important. But the federal government created all these, but they weren't going to disrupt their uh, allegiance to the white race. Okay. Let's go back to start where all this started for land. 40 acres and a mule. Right after the Civil War, Sherman promised the free black slave men that they would give them, it was, I think it was over 400,000 acres of land that they would divide up and give to black people along with the mule that they promised would to come later. But the land was mostly in the southern states because now the Union won their, they won the war. They, so the land that some of them had been working on, plantations, they were going to divide that up because they had taken all that land. Uh, but that didn't last long. It only lasted for about a, about a year. And then the federal government came in and said, oh, we, we made a mistake. We're going to take it back. We shouldn't have done that. You're not entitled to it. We're taking it back from you. 
So they've been lying to us for 400 years plus. So I just want to kind of say, this is where, this is kind of where it started. Sharecropping, black and land acquisition and white supremacy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Through the first half of the 19th century, as the United States continued its westward expansion and appropriate and uh, appropriations of even more native lands. This, everybody can hear me okay? Right. Okay. Uh, Westward expansion and appropriation of even more late native lands. And this is a part of when they started taking, because from Native Americans, indigenous people. Whenever, whenever they wanted to, uh, settlers, white settlers wanted to move, um, go south or go um, west, they would appropriate, the federal government would come in and take their land. And the Indians have been dealing with this all their lives. And that's the reason I started with Israel. This, is a, this seems to be a pattern. And, they, and the United States took it up. Okay, let me continue. Additional restrictions were placed on who owned property. Discrimination by race as well as religion country of origin was rampant, permitted by policies that either actively engaged or did little to prevent it. In some states, free black men were forbidden from, from, from purchasing land. Courts routinely invalidated gifts because sometime a master would give the slave, the slave or the head, you know what, some land. But that's a, it was a gift. So the courts invalidated those gifts and other transfers of property to black people, even outside of slaveholding jurisdictions, opportunities for land ownership were often limited, either by direct law or the failure to, regu to regulate discriminatory practice against people of color. So even if they... Yes, good question. Before we get too far, but a page back when they was talking about, he was talking about the 40 acres and the mule. Um, yeah. I read somewhere, I think that's where some of the, um, I guess, TV producers or whatever they are, black guys. Um, oh, yeah, that, Spike Lee. Spike Lee's. Oh, Spike his, Lee, that's who it is. Okay. Yeah, his company is called 40 Acres and a, and a Mule. Okay, so that's yeah. where they got it from. Okay. No, that's not where they got it from. That, yeah, that, well, that's where Spike Lee got it from. Right. And that, that's kind of play on words. He, he's, he's actually dabbing at the white system. Uh -huh. I saying I got that. You. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Move, uh, moving on. Okay, sugar, making sugar, making coolies, China, who are China, were Chinese, laborers toil alongside black workers. So let me read the part for this. Policies in the post-Civil War period continue to limit BIPOC. BIPOC is B-I-P-O-C which stands for Blacks, Indigenous, and people and other people of color. So you'll hear me use that term BIPOC in capital letters throughout here, we're gonna talk about it. But that's, if you read books or if you do look at anything, when they're talking about people of color, color Blacks, Indigenous people, and other people and Hispanics, they, that's a short term word that they use, BIPOC. BIPOC property owners prohibits uh, on black land, they prohibits black land acquisition increase following the emancipation in favor of slaveholding states, while exploitive practices like sharecropping entrenched existing racial power inequities. Elsewhere, so social, economic, and legal enforcement of residential segregation further provided BIPOC people from accessing housing, 
and wealth building opportunities. For example, Asian labor brought to the, was brought to the United States in the late 19th century. And they were used for forced labor to live in all in their in on land or in areas that were just Chinese. They didn't they didn't want them living with us. So eventually, what developed that out of that, which all of us know, most states or most cities have a China Chinatown, and that's how Chinatown actually started, because they put them all together. And they, they were not to live outside of Chinatown. Okay. Let's get into some definitions, make sure that everybody's on the same page. Redlining, most of us have heard of that. The red line is supposed to be outlawed, but redlining, the term has come to mean racial discrimination of any kind in housing, but it comes from the government maps that outline areas where Blacks residents lived and, and were therefore deemed risky invest, investments. These, I'm going to show you some pictures of how the um, state and the federal government looked at the places and deemed them unfit for investments. Okay. The next one, what are racial covenants? Racial covenants can be found in property records of every American community. These restrictive clauses, in the, and they were usually in the deeds, were inserted into property deeds to prevent who were, who were not white from buying or occupying land. Racial covenants served as legal enforcement of contracts. It, it was in the D, if you bought, if you were lucky to be able to get a house and you were black, or you had somebody white, have, but if a white person bought a house, it, it was in the covenant that, or in the deed, that you could not sell that house to a black person. Hmm. So, they had all, all these laws, and they were, and they were, and they were. Some of them were legal until some of them changed. But even when they changed the laws and they made them illegal for you to do that, they didn't enforce them because you still had racist people, white, white people, uh, in, in those jobs. Okay, this is talk, this is talking about pre twentieth century land and housing policies how they stole land from indigenous people. Land ownership has always been restricted in the United States, even before it was an independent nation. Early co co colonists claimed land from native tribes and forced native populations to live in designated areas separate from colonial settlements called reservations. Ours was ghettos, theirs was reservations. As those settlements grew, colonial governments appropriated more territory from native populations and limited their rights to own and sell property. Now you come in and steal somebody's land, take it, and because you got law, your laws and you got guns, so you're going to take it and tell them that they can't live on the land anymore. All right. Um, in 1763, the British government offered some protection to native lands west of the Appalachian Mountains. Through, Though following the American Revolution, the new U.S. government invalidated the prior agreement and seize lands from native tribes that had fought against the colonists. So if, if the Cherokees were fighting the, the soldiers or for fighting the colonists, then they would take the Cherokees land and say, and sell, you know, and then make it their own. That's how America became America. 
we are, you know, they talk about us, you know, being thieves, black people being thieves and all this other stuff. They're the biggest ones because they stole America. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Do, 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 do. This is what a red lining map looks like. This is Macon, Georgia. And you can see that in, this is a map and they have designated areas that are red to be for black people. That's what they call it. That's what they meant by redlining is that they wouldn't sell white people and they created certain areas just for blacks. Sometimes it was public housing. You know, most, like I said, most public housing, we're going to get to that, was not necessarily de designed for black people. We're, we're going to get to it. But this is just what it looks like. Uh, maybe in um, the, the um, state or federal government, how they created these areas just for black people. This is another redlining was banned 50 years ago. It's still hurting blacks today. You can look at you can look at Baltimore. Those areas just didn't happen to pop up that way. In some cases, they were there were white people living in some of the houses that are in the inner city in Baltimore, different parts, the, the west side and the east side. But more, the more blacks that moved in, naturally the more whites that moved out. And then they, be, they became ghettos. Yep. Public housing, black ghettos. The purposeful use of public housing by federal and local governments to herd black into urban ghettos had his big influence on what is the creation of the segregation system. Most Americans have an image of, of public housing. That's why I picked this picture. Most of us think that this is what public housing looks like. Or sometimes it's just small, smaller, they're, they're not high rise. And I, I, I'll say like, like Cherry Hill, they don't have high rises, different kind of public housing created for poor black people, uneducated black people, people that are gonna fight among themselves. But that's what I just said is the image that we have about public housing. They're killing each other. They have there's rapid drug use, young, Girls are having babies at, as teenagers. So it's, it's, they think that that's, that's the image that most of us have of public housing. But let me say this, most Americans have an image of public housing on a high rise towers with few amenities like pulp, no ball, no playgrounds, no parks and packed next to in one another in central city neighborhoods, plagued by crime and drugs and filled with black or Hispanic mothers and their children. It's, it's mostly inaccurate, even today, but it can't be further from the reality of public housing when it began in the mid 20th century at the at that time, public housing was mostly for working and lower middle class white families. Mm. 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 It was not heavily subsidized and tenants paid full cost of operations. And the reason that they, this, the reason that they did uh, a lot of public housing was because in the 30s, when the Depression hit, um, built 
um, entrepreneurs and builders stop making single family homes because they nobody could afford them because the, 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 the country was in a deep, deep depression. So the federal government built houses, but that's what they built these houses for. These public, public housing was for white people because there wasn't enough housing to go around for white people. They could afford to pay full price. It wasn't subsidized. So the, the reason is not the same thing that black people in there, because most people are living in public housing now. Some of them are, some of them are living on, in Section 8. Some of them living off of, for, for different reasons, depending on the, the state. Okay, segregated walls. Just about every state, every city in America has some form of wall. Some of them, some of them look like this. Some of them are 10 feet tall. Some of them are, are walls that you can't see, but they are highways. The neighborhoods are divided by highways. There's usually a street or a couple of streets that divide white people from black people. Just like, I mean, when I came to Baltimore, everybody was telling me about Park Heights. And they said, it's where the ghetto and Israel hook up or meets. If you go Northern Parkway is the dividing line, is that wall. In most cases, it used to be. Now you have you have Mount Washington, you have Roland Park, but the, and the where, and you go straight up Park Heights. Once you cross Northern Parkway, it's a whole different whole different look. Right. Right. It's a whole different look. Just that one street. So that's theoretically that wall. And the, 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 the people that live below that are, you know, they're not making a million dollars a year, $100,000 a year, you know. So this property, once you go, this is, that's where Africa and Israel meet, Northern Parkway. Mm. So around the 20th century, a new wave of housing and land use policies were in introduced across America. To facilitate the, the uh, uh, disposal of households from crowded city and encourage more property ownership, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, underplay, underplaying many of the laws, however, was concentrated effort to segregate households by race and ethnicity. Some state and local policies were explicit in their exclusion of BIPOC people from living and owning property in certain communities. Mm. Arguing the, that integration would, listen to this, that integration would lead to social and civil unrest. Um, Other segregated neighborhoods economically by pr permitting only single family homes to be most desirable neighborhoods for white people. Effectively pricing out most households for people of color for those areas. A lack of enforcement against private acts of overt discrimination, such as deed restrictions, what I just mentioned, the covenants. You couldn't see, your deed said you couldn't you couldn't sell the to white the black people. And excuse me. And, and then prevented resale of an individual property to anyone of a designated race of Hispanic, black, Asian. Okay. It was against the law for you to resell your house to us. 
Hmm. Racial exclusionary zoning. Now, red line is one thing that, that they, this is racial zoning. Racial zoning is the use of zoning ordinance to exclude certain types of land use from community, especially to regulate racial and economic diversity in the United States. Exclusionary zoning ordinances are standard in most communities across the nation. Exclusionary zoning was introduced in the 1900s, typically to prevent racial and ethnic people of color from moving into middle and upper class neighborhoods. So they created these zones for you, for us. And we think since Obama was pre president, a lot of people think, hey, we don't have no race problem. Oh, that's what Tim Scott said. Oh, we don't have any race problem. <laughs> own your own home. Racial segregation of American cities was nothing, was, was not accidental. Exclusionary zoning orders could be and have been successful in keeping low income blacks indeed and, and low income families out of middle class neighborhoods. But for those wanting to segregate America, which they did, zoning solved only half of the problem. Zoning that created neighborhoods of only single family homes could not keep out middle class blacks. Herbert Hoover's seemingly, oh, sorry, Herbert Hoover. All right, hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. I almost lost where I was. Oh, yeah, okay. So uh, Herbert Hoover's seemingly race neutral zoning recommendations could not prevent blacks who could afford to live in expensive communities from doing so. Frequently blacks who attempted to pioneer the integration of white middle-class neighborhoods were of higher social status than their white neighbors. And they were readily of a lower class, lower status. So you have now some of these neighborhoods, you had professional blacks making good money now wanting to move into these neighborhoods. The incident, this is about Baltimore, listen to this. The incident that pro provoked Baltimore to adapt its racial zoning ordinance in 1910 was a prominent black lawyer moving into a majority white block. Now all of you Baltimoreans, I know some historians out there. Who was that black lawyer? Anybody? <laughs> was his was his name McMeekin? Or was he the doctor? No, he uh last name was Hawkins. Hawkins, okay. There was also the one with a McMeekin also. Yes. Uh, yes, you know. McMeekin, and you you that's right, you're absolutely right, Bernard. McMeekin is the one that came up with the idea of these ordinances because of what his name is Ashby Hawkins. Mm -hmm. And he moved in on McCullough Street. That's correct. Right. And, he, and that and Ashby said, well, because this is happening, then he that's when he came up with the or he's the author of all these ordinances. Mm -hmm. All right. And they named the street after him too. They named the they named an entire street after him, McMeekin. Right. I, I, when I when I read that, I said, "Oh, I've been to, you know I, I've taught some classes at, at right on in, at, at a uh, high rise right on McMeekin Street, right mm -hmm. down right down there where um, um, art the art college is, which uh, mm -hmm. yeah, right, right 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 off of um right I know you um. Uh, you come down, um, or you're right off of Northern Parkway, where Northern Parkway comes out and 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 
and um, 83, we can come up with 83, Northern Park. Mm -hmm. That's North, yeah, North Avenue and that South um, Reservoir. Exactly, Reservoir. Mm -hmm. exactly, yes. Okay, in 1913, President Woodrow Wilson and his cabinet approved the implementation of segregation in the federal government. Hmm. What they did was curtains were installed to separate black and white clerical workers. Separate cafeterias were created. Separate basement toilets were constructed for blacks and black supervisors because they had they had promoted some black supervisors in the federal government. But when her um, Woodrow Wilson came in, he said, "Oh no 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 no." They demoted every black supervisor because he did not want blacks telling whites what to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. The Fair Housing Act of 1968. We thought when this came about that this would help solve a lot of problems. No. Despite the 1968 Federal uh, Fair Housing Act making race-based housing discrimination illegal, desperate treatment of BIPOC people in property and mortgage markets has continued over the last 50 years. And it is still going on. Through a combination of weak enforcement and regulation against discrimination practices, the new policy built on the legacy of past inequities, the Fair Housing Act itself was passed with no mechanism for either punishing people that broke that law and also for housing discrimination, nor for for providing relief to families negatively affected, nor did the act define what constitute a discrimination act. Giving license to housing industry agents, real estate agents, to develop alternative ways to discriminate on, for families of color, such as though the neighborhood steering such as neighborhood steering, direct marketing. The Fair Housing Act was also provided with no means to undo past damage. So they just said, hmm, we're gonna create this going forward, but we can't undo what we've done all these hundreds of years or more than a hundred years. We're gonna leave it the same. We're gonna leave the ghettos the same. We're gonna leave it just like it is. Public housing. Some places, everybody's hurt back during the time when they were tearing down um, a, a big housing complex in Chicago. I think it was called PD Green, something like that. But that's a very seldom. But my understanding that the, the ghetto, the ghetto of, of Cherry Hill is getting ready to be torn down also. But guess, but guess what? They're making way for white people to move down there. Mm. At public housing down in, in Cherry Hill, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're starting to build a whole lot of stuff. But white people want to live on, on that water. Off the water. Yep. Off the water, exactly. That's where Lexington Market and downtown, Cross Street, all that's going to yeah. tie in together. You come up, you, if, if, you have, if you've been in Brooklyn or in that area, you notice that they they started to do some work going across the Hanover Bridge now. It's a smooth ride. Mm -hmm. Not bumpy, it's not a whole lot of potholes. In in um in Cherry Hill Shopping Center, one of the largest banks in the world, Citibank, just opened up a branch about I think last year or a couple of years ago. They don't come into neighborhoods 
that are, that are basically ghetto. There's no money there. So the potential for money is coming. And where are they going to put all those black people? Mm. They can't. They've already got them out of the county. They're over <laughs> there to the point right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they got they they they're going further out now. They they outnumbered the county to the point that you know residents are complaining because they now. Oh yeah, they 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 are complaining. The police officers out there used to be able to sit in Dunkin' Donuts all night and eat donuts and coffee. But you and, and then we came out there and we be quiet during the day and make all this noise and walk us at night, giving them this, a this job is, to do. This is what we're talking about, white flight. Yeah, that's why I had to put this in here. Well, the, the thing is, Brother Qualls, not to slow you. No, you, go ahead, Bernard. Absolutely. The thing is, is that they're coming into the city because of what they're doing now. You know, you mentioned Cherry Hill. Why are they taking over that waterfront? Well, there's been proposed. They want to turn it into a complete yacht club yeah. right there on that front. And they're going to do it. Cherry Hill residents are not going to move because they was talking about the eminent domain fact and they fought that and won. Okay. So they're those, they feel like the way that they move people of color out of the city is has always been financial. You can't stop taxes. And if I raise the taxes to the rate that you can't afford it, then your house is up for for sale, we can sale. Your house. Exactly. and then they realize they raise water and a few so they realize at this point if you can't afford to live in the city then where else are you going to go you see and that's what's happening so now they offer these various programs and they don't call them you know section they call them um voucher yes and the voucher basically means that they can move into your neighborhood if you don't have a uh Homeowners, homeowners association, then you can't stop them from moving next door to you because it's a form of discrimination. Yes. So, so this is the reason why you had this mix in various counties because it's everywhere, Columbia included, and everyone's out. It's not just us. You know, you have Africans, you have um, Spanish, you got you know Latinos, you got them all. Yes. And they want to go where the money is, and the money right now is supposedly going into the city. That's why they bought the, the Inner Harbor, because they got plans for that. You know what I'm saying? So. No, you're, you're, Bernard, you're absolutely right. And thank you for, for, for those comments. Yeah, white flight is is what, and I'm going back in time. You can see that this was this was the original of, of, of Black people moving into, because D.C. had, when, I, when I'm with my, my sister and my family, we moved into D.C., uh, that was black people moving in. We were the we were like the third uh, blacks on our block, and so and this was in the fifties mm -hmm. and sixties. So it didn't take long for it to be all pretty much all black the neighborhood. But now it's just it, it, the white white flight is re um, regenification. People, yeah. people are coming back into the city. Yeah. DC eventually chocolate city is going to be white milk. Well, if you think that's something, <laughs> just to prove a point, go on Pennsylvania Avenue now. See what it looks like. There's more white families living on Pennsylvania Avenue in this city than I've ever seen. And I'm a yes. part of Pennsylvania Avenue and I've never seen it like this. Yeah. Well, that's that that was like the same thing for me. I wonder, um, if I go to Houston in DC. Yeah. And it used, to, it used to be nothing but black people. Now you see white people out walking the dogs. And, yeah. you know, I mean, you see you see just about every nationality there. So white flight in reverse is mm -hmm. exactly. But we've we've talked enough about white flight, but let's let's talk about how it how it came about. As black American and other people of color moved to northern cities in the Great Migration. And the Great Migration was from 1915 to 1970. That wasn't that long ago. That's about 50 years. Observers noted that significant number of white households moved away from urban centers. The phenomena was called white flight. But we are just like we're talking about now, but now it's in reverse. Just about all the cities 
have gone through their white flight period, and that usually it lasts maybe 20 or 30 years. And then that reverse, white people starting to come back because white people moved out of DC into Prince George's County. Prince George's County, then black people started as they gained more money, gave more status in the federal government and all of the other uh, businesses and companies around DC. Black people started making a whole lot more money. They moved out to Prince George's County. Now we know Prince George's County is probably the wealthiest black county in the nation. But where did those white people, the white people coming back? The young white people are coming back into DC. They build it, they, they're taking a lot of those old uh, things up and down U Street, up and down 9th Street, up and down 12th Street, all these places, and making condos. Okay. Moving on to the next one the Great Recession. That was when, this is when Obama took office. He, that most of them, they, they had to bail out a lot of these companies because of subprime mortgages. The Great Recession and the collapse of, in the US housing market did dramatically lower the value of many people's most valuable asset, their house. Yep. Surveys taken after the recession showed white households recover that wealth more quickly than black households, which continued losing wealth for several years. And they're still losing. More, more black people got caught up in this subprime mortgage than anybody else. But white people got caught up in it too, but their money came back. Okay, let me, I wanna, I'm gonna show you a video. I should, it should be up. Okay. This, this, this is not a long video, it's only about six or seven minutes, but it, it hits home. Can everybody see this now? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's no. That's no. Everybody hear it? No, no. okay here. No, no. no, okay here. All right. Let's see what's wrong with the sound. Let me stop it. Still can't hear it. Oh. Nope. nope. All right, hold on. The sound. And that's by design. In addition to artists cataloging their hear. very personal yeah. experiences, yeah, we can hear it now. Yeah. We can hear it now. You can hear it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. 
The story of what housing and other living conditions look like for many Black Americans is pretty bleak, and that's by design. Those houses. In addition to artists cataloging their very personal experiences, it's been proven that the modern phenomenon of concentrated Black poverty was an intentional government-sponsored institution. This is in part why President Biden issued an executive order back in January intended to right the historical wrongs Black folks have faced when it comes to housing and home ownership and in this country. But by first, design. let's take it back. In addition to artists cataloging their African American experiences, you can hear it now. You can hear it now. You can hear it now. Okay. 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 You can hear it now. You can hear it now. You can hear it now. It's only with the story the great of what housing and other living conditions look like for many African Black Americans is pretty bleak. Escaping the sound, and that's the by dominant response. Of, in addition to artists cataloging the United States their government and state and local governments, the government, the government, 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 Maybe I got a, maybe the other one is playing also. Let me. Have when it comes to housing and home ownership. Uh, let me stop this for a minute. How come? I just want to make sure that, I, that I'm not playing both of them at the same time. Can you hear it now? No, we'll hear no. nothing. Nothing. Okay. No. We, we were hearing two. Initially, initially, we were fine with the, with just the one. It was fine playing, and you, once you mentioned it again, then the second one came in. Okay. Can you hear it now? No. Not yet. Yes or no? No. No. You're not sharing your screen. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's what I... But I want to make sure. Can you City, hear it now? They weren't segregated now? particularly. No, no, it's only no, with no. the great migration of we, we were hearing two African Americans okay. in the North okay. and West. Initially, initially we were fine with, with just the one. It was fine playing and you once you mentioned United States again, government and state and local governments to okay. the great migration was to contain Can you hear it now? black people yes. in their own no. neighborhoods. Yes. And HUD, the Department of Housing and yes or Development, no. was no. particularly no. a part of this. Okay. You're not sharing your screen. Introduced yeah, that, that, and encouraged well, right. racially restrictive covenants, redlining of every major city where African Americans can hear too. landed. I can hear it also. Federal government All right, was a sponsor good. of <laughs> urban <laughs> renewal, infamously sure. called Negro removal by the great James Baldwin. Urban renewal. Which means moving Can you hear it now? They weren't segregated. No, 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 it's only no, with no, the great migration. We, we were hearing two African-Americans in the West. Initially, we were fine with just the one. It was fine with the United States government and state and local governments which was intentionally designed to move through vibrant black Can you hear it now? Yes. Miami, for example. And HUD, two highways, I-95, I-395. No, I can hear you. You're not sharing your screen. Introduced yes, that, that, and well, encouraged that's right. racial colors, restrictive colors, covenants, redlining. The Department of Housing and Urban Development. I can hear it. 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 I can you're still getting feedback? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, it sounds like it's replaying the recording of the session because it's replaying what people are commenting on and it's replaying mm -hmm. that in addition yeah. to playing the regular video. I think because you're, sure you're live on Face on um, YouTube. Yeah, that's what it is. Well, I'm on YouTube. Ah, and you're on YouTube. Yeah. That's okay. interesting. I would love to see that.
They're getting paid back. Can you hear that? We were here. I have to turn off one. Replaced it with another. You're still getting feedback. Iconic. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it's replaying. I don't have recording of the session. I shouldn't have another one. It sounds like there are two tapes playing. If we could take off one, then it would be perfect. Directly in the Department yeah, of Housing and Urban Affairs. Okay. Two tapes playing. If we could take off one, then it would be perfect. Of the 20th Directly century, the yeah, yeah. 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 millions of dollars in racial segregation and concentrated poverty. Each time right this country created a peculiar institution that subordinated Black people, slavery, Jim Crow, it created and dismantled it. They replaced it with another one. And the iconic Black ghetto, I don't use that as a purgative, I use it as a descriptor, was a follow-on institution to slavery and Jim Crow. That's the legacy that every new administration inherits okay. and the Biden administration has as well. Today, I'm directing the Department of Housing and Urban Affairs and Urban Development to redress the historical racism in federal housing policies. This executive order is just plan. one of four if signed by President one, Biden designed to address perfect. racial equity in the United States. States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Millions of in the right direction. There's still a lot of harm to undo. Segregation started coming down after Each the time yeah. this yeah. country yeah. Yeah. created yeah. a peculiar Which actually only got passed black in the wake of slavery, Jim Crow. It created a dismantled it. Eight out of ten black people would have had to The iconic black ghetto and integrated within metropolitan areas, areas half of black was a people follow -on who live in metropolitan areas. That's the legacy still that the every new administration inherits. So we have modest improvement Today, on segregation I'm directing the Department of Housing, and Urban Affairs, and Urban Development to redress the historical racism in federal housing The so-called American dream is only working this executive for a relatively small slice of the population that can only buy their way into the of well, some advocates are hopeful. Which actually which actually some actually applause this executive order for really focusing on historical patterns of racial segregation and discrimination in housing, while others remain cautiously optimistic. Here's Professor Cashin's suggestion. There should be an equity in that every new administration and parents so much. So, so much. Much. we have modest improvement. Today, by I'm directing the Department of Housing, Urban Affairs, and Urban Development to redress the struggle. Oh, can you turn the sound off? The American dream is only working for a relatively small population that can only buy their way into what I call those housing and parents. There should be an equity in that every new administration and parents. So much. So much. We have modest improvement. Today, I'm directing the Department of Housing, Urban Affairs, and Urban Development to redress the struggle. Oh, can you turn the sound off? The American dream is only working for a relatively small population that can only buy their way into what I call those housing and parents. Well, some advocates are hopeful. Home applause to this executive order for really focusing on historical patterns of racial segregation and discrimination in housing, while others remain cautiously optimistic. Here's Professor Cashin's suggestion. Department 
that wants something better than a sexual that overinvests in some neighborhoods and disinvests and preys upon people in other neighborhoods. Generations more radical than this guy. And everybody else struggles in their life. They struggle. You're hearing something? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm well, not even sure. I'm 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 if you go on YouTube, all you have to do is put in segregated housing and you can see this, but it, it you can see it showed a lot about Baltimore. Okay, let me go back to where I was. Martin Luther King Jr., which tend to be in, to let's say, distressed areas. And he's not wrong, because if you look at the way housing segregation works in America, you can see how things ended up this way. Once you see it, you won't be able to unsee it. Okay, let's look at MLK Boulevard in Baltimore. I want to show you how to see housing segregation in schools, in health, in family wealth, in policing. But first, an explanatory comment. It's the 1930s in the wake of the Great Depression. He wants to bring economic relief to millions of Americans through a collection of federal programs and projects called the New Deal. One part of that New Deal was the National Housing Act of 1934, which introduced ideas like the 30-year mortgage and low fixed interest rates. So now you have all these lower income people who can afford homes, but how do you make sure they don't default on their new mortgages? Enter the home owner's loan. Yeah, I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. Let me... You're, it's off now. Okay. The YouTube segregated housing. Right. Okay, Blue let's look at MLK white collar in Baltimore. Baltimore. Yellow man. I want to show you how to see housing segregation in class. Red man. Detrimental in policing. As first, by an exponent of the power of middle class whites. It's the 1930s in the middle of the week of war. What's to bring again and again on these HLC Americans? One of the most consistent criteria for our Islam neighborhoods is one part of that of black and white national housing act. Let's be clear. Studies show that ideas like in the red line area. And were low not necessarily more likely to so now you have all these lower income redlining can be difficult, but how do you make sure they don't defy all their mortgages? And property values drop. Okay. All of these conditions fester for 30 years as well. Was first, now it's the 1960s. It's the 1930s. Again and again, on the the consistent criteria. one part of it. Can everybody hear me okay? Oh, yeah. All right. Yes. Wait, could y'all see this, this slide? But it does little to fix the damage already done. Over the next 50 years, the Fair Housing Act is rarely in and property values drop. So you can still see these houses in for 30 years as well Baltimore and often along any MLK Boulevard in any U.S. city. Like its effects on wealth. So home ownership is the major way Americans create wealth, right? Well, discrimination in housing is the major reason why first now it's in 1960. It 
absolutely. Way. Everyone and property in the world values drop. So you can still all of these housing is special. In no 30 effects. years as why and you're housing you're segregation in school people. So in the any primary USA, way that Americans pay for like public its effects schools on is by paying so property So home ownership is the major way Americans more valuable wealth, homes right? have better well, the discrimination in housing better see the major business that is now in the 1960s have a time of fraction of 1960s that is now the better the school of white families the better the kids are going to get almost 30 years higher than the time of the time of the time and housing segregation in health. Because of urban planning that benefited those richer, wider neighborhoods, people of color are more likely to live near industrial plants that spew toxic food. They're more likely to live far away from grocery stores with fresh food and in places where the water isn't drinkable. They're more likely to live in neighborhoods with crumbling infrastructure and property values. So you can still live in houses and so our home ownership is the major way and not coincidental people of color have higher in housing and they're and housing segregation in health. Because of urban planning that benefited those richer, wider neighborhoods, people of color are more likely to live near industrial plants that spew toxic food. They're more likely to live far away from grocery stores with fresh food and in places where the water isn't drinkable. They're more likely to live in neighborhoods with crumbling infrastructure and property values. So you can still live in houses and houses and housing segregation in health. Because of urban planning that benefited those richer, wider neighborhoods, people of color are more likely to live near industrial plants that spew toxic food. They're more likely to live far away from grocery stores with fresh food and in places where the water isn't drinkable. They're more likely to live in neighborhoods with crumbling infrastructure and property values. So you can still live in houses and houses. And housing segregation in health. Because of urban planning that benefited those richer, wider neighborhoods, people of color are more likely to live near industrial plants that spew toxic food. They're more likely to live far away from grocery stores with fresh food and in places where the water isn't drinkable. They're more likely to live in neighborhoods with crumbling infrastructure and property values. So you can still live in houses and houses and houses and houses and housing segregation in health. Because of urban planning that benefited those richer, wider neighborhoods, people of color are more likely to live near industrial plants that spew toxic food. They're more likely to live far away from grocery stores with fresh food and in places where the water isn't drinkable. They're more likely to live in neighborhoods with crumbling infrastructure and property values. So you can still live in houses
and housing segregation in health. Because of urban planning that benefited towards richer, wider neighborhoods, people of color are more likely to live near industrial plants that spew toxins. They're more likely to live far away from grocery stores with fresh food and in places where the water isn't enough. They're more likely to live in neighborhoods with crumbling infrastructure and improper values. So you can see all of these houses in How's that? I see your calendar. I All see right. a year. Okay. I see your calendar. That's okay. Okay. Something about you two seems to be interfering. Yeah. With your videos. Do you still hear the video now? No. no, no. I think yeah, it was, it was one was still playing in the background, and I, I just couldn't find where where it was because it wasn't it wasn't showing up on my screen, but. Can we access both of them through YouTube, though? Um, hold on. I'm just trying to get back to. Where I was. What are you seeing now? You see my email? Trading, yes, you. Yep. Okay. What are you seeing now? Your slide. The original slide. The slide, okay. First yeah. slide. All right. The first slide. Yeah, right, first one, okay. <clears throat> Okay, that that brings me back to where I, I am now. You, you don't hear any background noise. No. Yeah. Don't touch. <laughs> All right. The, the this one um, isn't. We only got a couple more slides to go. This one is is uh, called considering different kinds of fixes for what we think is a problem. Well, this is kind of taken from a, a white person's perspective, and it's kind of looking at it what what white people need to do in order to help fix this problem so but it's, it's like a combination so let me talk about this as a nation we have paid an enormous price for avoiding an op, an obligation to remedy the uncon, unconstitutional segregation we have allowed to fester <clears throat> excuse me Blacks, of course, suffer from our ev evasion, but so too does the nation as a whole, as to and do as do whites in particular also. Many of our serious national problems either originate with residential segregation or have become intractable because of it. We have greater political and social conflict because we must add unfamiliarity with fellow citizens of different racial backgrounds to the challenges we confront in resolving legitimate disagreements about public issues. And that's the that reason I put this in here because it's, it's like, this is what's going on. This is looking at it from a white person standpoint. Racial polarization stemming from our separateness has corrupted our policies, our permitting leaders who ignore interests of white working class voters to mobilize them with racial appeals. And this is basically what Trump has done. 
he he thinks white people think that they, the middle class white people or working class white people think that they've been ignored. That's why they're sticking with Trump. Yeah. Whites may support political candidates who pander to their sense of racial entitlement while advocating policies that permit the inferior economic opportunities that some whites may face. Interracial poli pol political alliances become more difficult to organize when whites develop overall tolerance judgments of unfortunate from a need to justify their own acceptance of segregation that is so obviously conflicts with both their civic ideas and their religious ones. So basically what they're saying is white people don't think that black people are, 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 are like us, but they're also electing people like people that have the house in gridlock right now. Stupid people. <laughs> the existence of black ghettos is a visible reminder of our inequalities and history. A reminder that whose implications are so uncomfortable that we find ways to avoid them. White people don't want to talk about ghettos. They don't want to talk about race. And my thing is that we should be. When you and I, you've heard me say this before, when you're in meetings, if you think it, there, because everything has something to do with race. No matter what what you you're talking about policies, it has something to do with race. Nine times out of ten, whites can develop. dysfunctional cynicism from living in a society that proclaims values of justice while maintaining racial inequities that belie those values. They're talking out of one mouth, talking about, talking about equality, talking about justification, talking about Christianity, but yet they, they want to remain white or have that ideology that they're white supremacists. Okay, um, this is, I just wanted to throw this in here at the end. Has, has anybody heard of the Kerner, uh, Kerner, Kerner uh, Commission? Without yeah, looking, yep. Okay. It's reported that came out after the uh, riots that uh, proclaimed things what need to be changed. Right. The, the report was released, and just like Mr. Highsmith said, uh, first of all, it's a, uh, President Johnson at that time co commissioned this 11-member um, uh, commission to look at why, in the summer of 1967, that we had, they had riots. The report was released in 1968. After seven months of investigation, it attributed the riots to lack of econ economic opportunity for Blacks, failed social service programs, police brutality, racism, and the orientation of national media to white perspectives. So they knew what the problem was. So did it, has it, has anybody <laughs> know of it? Any of those things that have been fixed? No. Actually, not a one. Yeah, not a one. We no. still not a one. We still we still got police brutality. We got a George Floyd. We got all these other uh, people that have been detained, beaten, killed for no reason at all. Racism, social programs. So things haven't really changed, and they really are trying to go backwards. So let me. So in, anybody have any questions or comments about what we've been talking about? just how important it is 
for us to realize, and, and again, you know me, I always say, pass it on to your children. Talk to your, your family about this. Any comments? The only comment I have is that we're right where you started. It's about land and power and acquisition of land unfairly. <laughs> and yes. it's going on today. <laughs> it is. And if I may also recommend, um, there's a book out, I think we talked about it the last time during your session called The Black Butterfly. It yes. talks about what's going on here in Maryland and what they still are doing right now. And they're talking about this recent redlining and what's happening. I think the um, uh, the mayor hasn't approved it just as of yet, but get the book and talk just about what's happening right now and you can see it. Yeah, um, thank you. For, I, I I I um I ordered I ordered the book based on what you uh you mm -hmm. recommended, Bernard. And and but but I started reading some of it online about yeah, yeah and it 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 is absolutely phenomenal. It's 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 unbelievable. Um, yes. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's not it's just beginning. <laughs> yeah. It's just beginning, and it's going it's going to really because they have an they have an agenda on store, and it's all about economics at this point. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Is well that, that that's what it's all about. It's always mm -hmm. been them mm -hmm. keeping the wealth, them maintaining the gap. They can they can give all kinds of lip to, oh yeah, we're gonna create things to uh close the gap. But they haven't. Well, the, the thing is, and just surmising this book, one thing that they did mention in this book is that now it's not just blacks, they're bringing poor whites out. And putting they're bringing them in with people who are of the same economic status, okay? Because they're on the mindset that you know what they thought thirty years ago was just a black problem is now poor whites and other folk. If yes, you know. absolutely. And they're bringing them all in, so it's a thing about you know keeping at the um, the the well to dos, if you would, you know, in a certain collective area to help boost the economy. But then they're also looking at, well, you know, we, we don't have a place to house the sick, you know, in terms of mentally sick. We don't have a place to, to, to house people for various reasons. And there's so many different proposals that are being, you know, read, but nothing's really being done. So, right. yeah, but that book really digs into um, all of the various commissions that are out here and, and organizations that are funding these operations right now. So... Okay, what's the title of that book again? It's called The Black Butterfly. Okay, and have you heard of the Community Healing Network? That That's an organization that's been around for a little while. Mm -hmm. But what it pretends is that we ourselves, we are going to have to heal from the big lie. Like that was the worst thing that ever happened to us, the lie that they are su uh, supreme and we are inferior until we can heal from that and understand exactly who we are. Then we can make some changes because as you see, all these commissions have been going on for years and years and years and the colonel thing back in 1968. So mm -hmm. we get stuff going for generations and generations. Right. This generation is gonna have to learn to dispel the big lie that we are not inferior until we can understand that. There's, there's, there's all kinds of trouble happening in our schools. I'm, I'm sure you are familiar with the things that are going on absolutely in the public schools now. And they want to bring in more counselors, bring in more people to do certain things. And my con contention is until you get some people who understand who we are, what we're about, who have some compassion, who can, who can actually relate to us, all these new folks you're bringing in and all these different jobs that you're talking about hiring people for won't make any difference. And I agree 100%, I agree 100 with you yeah. on that because that is exactly what's happening. There is that divide. There is that dichotomy. But again, collective thinking on the parts of those yes. who want to do things has to be in place. And that's where the problems come into play also. One thinks one way, one believes another. No one trusts one another. No. Yes, and that's, and that's, 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 that's the Willie that's Lynch. That's the Willie Lynch syndrome. But we can heal. But we can't. We got to heal. 
So I'm quiet on that one. I'll leave you with, we have got to heal and understand that we are not inferior. You can't keep pushing. You ain't the boss of me no more. I'll put it like that. Mm -hmm. Well, when you, if you start talking to white people, when you start talking about, well, white people came from black people. And so they're, they're thinking those are the ones that want you to talk about them being superior and us being inferior. When you start going back in history and start talking about, well, this evolution thing, and, or where, where, did, where did white people come from? There are quite a few different train of thoughts on where white people came from. One is that yes. Albanos left Africa and went to Europe, but um, but you something as, and that's the it's similar to the same thing as just you didn't talk about Albanos that black people went uh, up to the ice to the ice age because we had civilizations going on thousands of years when the, when white people in Europe were still in caves during the ice age. So where, where did they, mm -hmm. they came from us? So once you realize that and start talking about it and, 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 and dwelling into it for white people, they kind of back off, you know, but they've been, you know, not all black, Program. yeah, not all black people are, are racist or, or but, but we live in a racist, you know, system, but, <clears throat> but not all white people, you know, understand that they've been brainwashed also, just like we have. Yes. They have, yes. you know, and the past, we, the ones that are, want to say, go ahead. You go know, ahead. even even if we say even if we say the albinos came from uh, Africa and moved on, on down to another region, you still have to look at the fact who were the original people. We are the original people. A absolutely. And, and if and if we can begin to believe that then we can have a better chance of standing on our feet and getting rid of some of this stuff that's being passed on down to our children. Yes. Oh, yes. brothers and sisters. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my camera on because I don't want you to see me crying. I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> well, but I kind of change what kind of tears <laughs> What kind Alicia, of tears? Alicia, Alicia that, that's the last. I didn't make. I didn't want to make you cry. Uh, that was not my, my intent. You know that. It's not you, darling. It's not you. <laughs> but what kind of tears am I crying now? <laughs> well, okay. I'm, we, I'm, just just, be, just before we close out, um, I'm gonna break the, 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 the a little bit of change the cycle a little bit because I I know that a lot of people. Uh, because I hadn't been in on for a while, a lot of people just dropped off, and, and some people were not getting, and, and I'm not sure why we're not getting because uh, the Zoom link, and I and I and I checked, and you should have received it, but anyway, um, but you that there have been a whole lot of new people coming on, so the next one I'm going to go back and I'm going to change it a little bit, but we're going to talk more about white supremacy and the system of, of white supremacy, how it's affecting us. So I wanna go back and, and, and do that, and then we'll continue on with the, with the, uh, the other topics. But I just wanted to- because... Tyrone, the white Amen. supremacy is happening now as we look at the vote for the Speaker of the House. Oh yeah. Because they got seven of the eight people don't even acknowledge <laughs> that, and, and that's second in line to the president, I mean- yeah. Well, oh, no. the, we're doing the, a lot, but well, the, the, the government, the voting and the government stuff is where we're going to have to make a difference. Right. Well, that's why I want to go back there, because it, it's so much that we talk about. If you think about the Israel war, that's, oh. that's about, that is about white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I was talking to my wife. She was asking me about Israel, and I said I was telling her, you know, all, all the information we had talked about before. But Israel is surrounded by nothing but brown countries. Right. Libya, uh, Syria, um, Iran, Jordan, uh, all, and and Egypt. All these brown company, countries. Uh, my, my, I know my, my son is not. I think he was on for a while, but he's, he left. He showed me a, a picture of 
there was a, a Jewish one, uh, guy way back in time. And he said, Jewish people started out being black, they left and they came back white. So, yes. <laughs> so Jewish yes. people, and they were black. They, they've been trying to be white for a long, long time. They wanted to be white. And so now they're in a position, but that they're not gonna be able to hold on to Israel if, if they don't do something about a two-state solution. Because if they go in and wipe out Gaza, let's say they clean it out, get all of Hamas out of there, who's going to run Gaza? Hmm. But that can't happen. That, huh? that, can, that can't happen because Hamas is geographically all around Israel. Exactly. So, I mean, that can't happen. Yeah, well, then, you know, I don't, uh, the, the prime minister of Israel has just been boasting about how he's going to wipe it out. He, he, I don't, we, they're not going to be able to wipe Hamas well, I don't, out. I don't, I don't, no, I, don't, uh, I don't think they're going to wipe out Saudi Arabia, are they? Exactly. Or Iran. Or, right. Uh, you know, okay. all, those, all those countries. Right. right. If, if they start to wipe, try to wipe them out, Israel is going to be really in trouble. And America's, America's going to have to Take send more ships over there to to, to protect them. They they have to be a, uh, their big brother. That's bigger than we even and, thinking about right now. That's bigger know, than that's, we even imagining yeah. right now. That that's gonna and be. When, a, when you mention America, when you mention America, I think we probably better look very very closely at why we are so gung ho about supporting Israel. Yes. What is the what? Yeah, the, we better look really closely at that. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right, Alicia. You're absolutely right. There's, there's, there's more to it. Well, they're, they're part of the UN. I mean, so they're under that agreement, right? We have to. That's 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 not the reason. That, 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 them being part of the UN is nothing. They, well, that, uh, is it the UN yeah. or that, you know what I'm trying to say, where we're supposed to be protecting each other? You're NATO. You're a NATO. NATO, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah NATO, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, again, like you said, Israel was made a state because they took the land from the Palestinians in, in 1948. So they made them, but they wanted to have, you know, a, basically a white, com a white um, uh, country over there in, you know, in that area. I don't use the term Middle East because there's no such place. Right. They just don't, they just don't want them to, to be associated with Africa. That's the only reason they they read, call it start calling it Middle East. <laughs> well, and and you just made a point right there because the connection between them and Egypt um, is strategically a, a strong place to have a presence. Yeah, and and Egypt Egypt. On, in the south and Libya in the north, they don't want all those people in, the, in Gaza. So if they don't let, it, that, where are those two million people that live in Gaza that not all two million of them are, are um, Hamas, they're, right. Pal they're, 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 they're Palestinians. So okay. where are they gonna live? Hmm. Uh -huh. those, those, uh, those are, those other countries are struggling already with, with the- You, with the, you the, met their non-Palestinians. Huh? You met their non-Palestinians. Yes, right, yeah. Yeah. I find now, it interesting. Now, no. the, the, people, the people in Gaza are Palestinians. Palestinians, yes. No, but I mean, they made the exception for the that, that 2,000 or so people who were none. Oh, non-Palestinians. Palestinians, yeah. Well, who, I, who? But it's no, it's no non-Palestinians in there. I mean, it's people from every place there, because there are a whole lot of black people live over there. Yeah, but all yeah. Over there, oh, there's there's non-Palestinians in the in the West Bank. Oh yeah. You see okay. what I'm saying? And, I, yeah, and, I see what you're saying. And, and that's a big connection to Gaza. Yes. The Gaza Absolutely. Strip. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, this 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 one is going to impact us more than the Ukraine and and and, and um because yes. Ukraine is just as racist as they can be yeah. uh, from our standpoint. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that's a whole not, that's a whole what, nother lecture. What, what, what gets that's a whole me, nother topic. What, what gets me, this country claims they have this debt ceiling and they can't afford to do anything else, but they can send money to these foreign countries. Hundred million dollars. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. You, you just the, the, the rough challenge. Money out the reserves. Yeah, money yeah. out the reserves. But they, 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 they want to keep the government over. They can't afford to keep the government over. But you can send hundreds of millions of dollars yeah, over to other folks. Yeah, yeah, and and I, and I said, where's the logic here of this yeah. country? That yeah. seems to that so, seems to be spelled <laughs> You better well, check this. You, <laughs> you, you, Bernard, you already, you already know the answer. If if they're talking about giving us some money, black people, people of color versus giving, of course, they, they only, they, they giving the money to Israel, mm -hmm. a white country, of course, to fight off the, the brown people. Sure, they, they're giving money uh, to Ukraine, white people, not to fight fight off of people of color, but to keep Russia from keep on going with his train of, of, and taking over U a, a Europe. That's, mm -hmm. They're just trying to slow that road, his, slow his roll down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, it's the, the, the next next uh, it, next year, two years, going to be interesting to see how this, uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't. Well, we got to first make sure Trump don't get in office. <laughs> yeah, did, did every, oh, did every, oh, God. Did everybody hear what what um, um, what's what's the name the, the, the white female Republican that was on the uh, uh, January sixth committee? Cheney, huh? Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney, right? Liz, did you hear what she said again? What she said? She said, "If y'all end up putting Trump back in, uh -huh. you can you can kill, you can take democracy and kiss it you know where." That's right. Goodbye. He's but, gone. But Brother Qualls, let me just say this. You know, personally, and, and just knowing how this country operates, you know, this country is all about money and control. Trump is not going back in there because they can't control him. Right. He's doing entirely too much. He's going out of the realms. He when he he made his first mistake by coming in the office and said, I don't need anybody. I can fix this country myself. Yes. He sent the red flag up right then and there. OK, and he started doing what he, he wanted. Did, to do. Yeah. And he started doing what he wanted to do. He did something that would be considered considered close to what took place in 9-11 by taking over the Capitol. He know he was behind that. But make a long story short. No, the powers who run this country, your people who have money don't want him in office because he's uncontrolled. Right. Yeah, he's but big. he's getting all of he's getting all the votes. He's getting these. No, that's he, he, he appears no. to be getting all the votes. That's what the media shows. But realistically, he can't do it. He still has to be processed in by those who run this country. That's right. generally, that's generally yeah. how it works. If you don't, if they don't like you, they will get you out of there. You know, right. he can't operate this country without them backing him. And yeah, we have a racist organization, but it's about the dollars. It's about keeping the currency flowing the way it is. And at the rate that he was going, he was causing more damage than what they, because he caused more problems. And they had to, they knew he wasn't. That's why he didn't make a second term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, 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 to, I totally agree with you, Bernard. You, you know, and, and, but, you know, you not only are voting in, but Trump cannot, he, he cannot be controlled. Yeah. But I, I, I I think that all of these lawsuits, especially the one in Atlanta, oh, yeah. they, they got, they're going to, he's going to be either have an ankle bracelet or, and he's going to keep on running his mouth. So, they, you know, they, they may end up locking him up because he's uh, 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 the gag order. He, he has a massive following of people who just don't know politics. No. And because he has those type folk following him, you have an ignorant society who believe in everything he says. Without but they got votes, Bernard. That's what they, they do. Have Seventy votes. million people voted for him last. That's time. correct. That is absolutely correct. He does have votes, but he isn't right now. If someone was to come out who was a Democrat, who shows a little bit more, uh, uh, what I say, aggression. He would be no problem, but no one's out there to compete against him. No, you know, and right now we all know that Biden 
you know, cannot, he would not withstand a debate. He just could not withstand it. His, his, he's at that point right now where his responses are just completely slow. He would be eaten alive. Well, he, you know, I, I was hoping that, you know, he, he might be able to make, but the, the more I watch him, yeah. he, the older he's, I, I, from a, from a health standpoint, sure. it's, not, it's something wrong. It's really something wrong with him. I, he, I, 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 I'm not ready to say that he's got dementia yet, but he is. On, he is. Yeah, may yeah. have before the next election. He mumbles his words. Yeah, yes. I, I hear. Well, well, he he stu he he, he stutters. stutters. He, he stutters anyway. But but yeah, but his he, his his vocabulary is not clear. And and if you watch how he walks, yeah, you All know, if 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 I didn't if I didn't know better, I would say he he may have. Uh, you know, you should say you have a touch of the diabetes. He has a touch of Parkinson's. Yeah, because you, you 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 see how he he looks like he has that shuffle gait when he when he's mm -hmm. when he's walking. Mm -hmm. And that, and and, and, and that's to be a honest sign. with you, Trump is is in no better shape because you know he gets in or even not even say gets in, but at this point, you know he's just thinking one sided. That's it. Yeah. He doesn't know politics. He won't know politics. He knows. So if they don't politics. vote for Biden. Then that only leaves Trump. That's who else is going to run. That's, 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 that's the problem. That's the problem. I, I was, exactly. yeah, I was just hoping. I was just hoping that Biden would 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 stay healthier to get through this election, and then after the election, he can die if he wants to. <laughs> right, because then that means that then that means you have a female vice pre uh, president that steps in. But well, Cam Camilla right. is she? She's not. She's not quite ready. But I think if if given the, the position, she will step up to the plate. I think so. Plate. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but that's but you know, but but I would I, her, I would fear for because I think she might they might they may try to kill her. Well, we said that about Obama, and well, guess Ob 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 Obama, you know, a lot of people, lot he got a lot of votes, and and Obama, Obama. Kind of acquiesced to the powers to be, mm -hmm. be, be realistic. He did. He did a lot of good things for for black people. But this this that's why I do the, this this the white supremacy system is in place, mm -hmm. and I don't care who is president. He or she is not going to change it in four years. Is not going to change it in eight years. It is too ingrained. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a grassroots effort for people coming up and, and make changes yeah and, and, and you're not going to change it for, for from that from the uh, president it's just no. it's not no. mm -hmm. all right people thank you so much all right tyrone uh, thanks we'll for um, we will, everything no, 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 let me see. my wife always has to tell me if you can we're accepting donations and i appreciate everybody that donates to my, my cause keeps me going keeps me buying books <laughs> Keeps me paying for ink, all, the whole nine yards. And I appreciate everybody, all that you have done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you in two weeks. All right. Sis, she won't be back in two weeks. You, 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 you're going to another country, right? <laughs> um, I am going to another country. She's she going to see the lights. <laughs> I'm going to see... She hopefully see the northern lights. She's going to see, northern, she's going to see the northern lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Just leave yeah. me. Um, keep my fingers crossed and hope that uh, that the lights show up. <laughs> Bernard, yes, that's my uh, sister that was married to Dr. Amprey. Oh, so she knows she knows my father there. She knows Bernard. Yes, she did know. Yes, yes, she does. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. met him many, many times. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, everybody. Good night. Y'all see y'all. Good night, everybody. Let, okay. let, it, let, it, let everybody know that you're talking to, that we'll, we'll back on, getting back on track, and, and we'll be back in two weeks. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Take care. Good night. See you soon. Love you Take all. Care. Good night, all right. everybody. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye.